This is the incredible 12 hour lawnmower race. Over 50 lawnmowers through 12 hours on a nearly one mile long circuit. This thing is grueling. And this video is about what it's like to race in this incredible event. So for this 12 hour race, we've got three of us, myself, Richard and Glenn, and we are taking on this race on this incredible machine, our group three Westwood Lawnberg. And we are gonna be sharing this racetrack with three other classes. There is the group two, we are in group three, group four, and we have tourist mowers. So this first stint is gonna get hectic. Let's jump straight into it. Right, so we're lined up on the grid here. We are the lead Lawnberg, which we're very happy about. This is all gonna be about running across the track, getting the cut off in, hitting the start button, dumping the clutch and going. So 8 p.m., we are ready to go. Flag is about to drop down, it goes across the circuit. We're all running, trying to get on the seat, cut off in, getting the engine started. I did leave the choke on so it would start nicely, so just turning that off. And we've got an incredible launch. Look how many mowers we've just driven past. I think there's nearly 10 mowers around the outside of Stewie on the Group 4. And we're just trying to settle in on this mower and just really trying to find our spot. I'm having a look around 65, but no, he's got the pace up the inside. So we're gonna settle in just behind him. Around this long right hand, a very bumpy even though we've only had uh, practice and qualifying it's already getting bumpy but just settling in this start i was over the moon with how this went last year i was a little bit hesitant at the start it cost us a bit of time uh, because as the the pack spreads out you kind of get caught in your position and so you want to be as far forward as possible so i think uh, coming down this back straight we're in definitely in the top 10 so a really good start considering we're in the in the group three the second class if you want to think of it that way uh, as we do have a tourism fly past us with a bit more power so we're going to go through the right down this back straight which is uh, the first of the two pit lanes this year me getting very excited because at the start of this race there's a lot of crowd it is definitely an honor to be able to start this race uh, for the team so into the right now up towards the second pit lane we are up here on the left uh, and so again giving the guys uh, giving the guys a wave here as we get into this top corner you can see there are just uh, so many mowers here i think it was 40 something mowers in this race so very very busy tucking it in the right still bumpy all the way through here back on the throttle again we're running quite a long uh, gear for the straights here so at some of the slower corners it is pretty tricky as uh, stewie gets me back through here so they're running a murray this year uh, we were battling them last year on the group three but they've gone up to the group four uh, so yeah jumping to the back straight you can see here these tourist mowers so a separate class where they have bigger engines they run up to 18 horsepower so they can carry a much bigger gear so down the back of the straight they are very very fast uh, so these guys um aren't in it for the overall win but they're fighting for their own class uh, and so we are racing for the uh, overall position and uh, position in our class so yellow flag as we come around here but it has sorted itself out by the time we get there so we're just trying to yeah just settle in here you can see how busy it is at the start here trying not to get caught up with everything uh, so 85 does just take a little bit of a spin there and behind me actually two mowers come together and Billy Callow spins off uh, that <laughs> Nicola and Emma are there up there marshalling so they're doing a good job uh, warning the mowers as we come through here so yeah just really settling into this first stint it's already getting a bit dark so we've got lights on the mower we've got our, our pink LEDs so you can definitely see us uh, Northerners kick grass number 50 comes around the outside there they had a tricky start where they actually um, got got hit and uh, rolled the mower on the second lap so very tricky start for them and they were recovering very quickly for it uh, team rattlers also nearly have a little bit of a, an off there as they come around the corner you're about to see here they do just get up on two wheels there you go and nearly roll it but manages to get it stopped and save it uh, so now we're uh, approaching number 32 actually to lap them we got an incredible launch and i think these guys uh, didn't have such a good time of it and so we're just trying to uh, find our way by they're also on a group three so fighting in our class there were only four group threes this year which was a real shame but um again you're trying to battle for overall position as well uh, for a bit of pride so as we're going to try and overtake 32 he pulls out and overtakes someone else as well so we're actually three wide up into the corner here and i managed to get the move done on the brakes so i wasn't quite alongside but got it done on the brakes into this top corner it was an uphill braking zone so you could really brake quite hard uh, and that one was a lot of fun to get it stopped from what was basically v max uh, into quite a tight hairpin so down into this corner you can really see that that was very getting very bumpy already uh, and this track all the way around was pretty tricky so we're going to try and swing around the outside of this group too and uh, he doesn't know i'm coming so actually we have to back out of that move and go around the outside uh, you can definitely see here how um 
this isn't just putting in lap times you've got to really deal with traffic find your way through the pack to get out of battles here and actually what you're going to see here is uh, i think the grass bandits here behind me uh, we do get a bit uh, caught up with them. So 46 come through, uh, it, a little bit of contact as he comes uh, down the inside. And so you can really see here how uh, the group three has uh, a lot of pace. Here we are out of the corners. And then the group four has more pace through some of the faster corners and through uh, down the end of the straights really with the slightly bigger wheels. So you can see how um, you really have to find your way around and settle in, in your own spot because you can get held up behind other mowers, even though they may be slightly faster overall or theoretically slightly faster overall. Um, if you're getting held up at the, point, at the points where you make up your lap time, it's really tricky. As we come through here, this corner was very easy to stall at, and I think they nearly stall here. So actually I come past, and even though they've overtaken me, they are holding me up slightly. So that's what that hand waving is, is about. Um, again, these things are always uh, more important in your head when you have your helmet on. Alfie sends it down the inside, a lovely dive bomb move, just as I did uh, to another mower there. He's sent it from a long way back, a very, very nice uh, move into the top corner there. So with it bunching up just ahead, I would have sat on the inside, but I actually take a different line here and I hit a massive bump just there. And because I was on the brakes uh, and the mower got up in the air, I, the brakes actually stalled the engine. So as I came through that corner, I had to stick my hand in the air to let the other guys know and then get it started again. A very embarrassing mistake, but it's one where you're so used to running your own line, you don't know what all the others are. And I ran a slightly different line and there was a massive bump there and stalled the engine. So uh, that lets the grass bandits back through. So again, we're um, just trying to find our own spot on the track here trying to find our own uh, bit of bit of space to race on so you can see i was finding down the right hand side was easier down that straight and then again they are just struggling to get out of that corner where we're all running very long gears for the straight some of the slower corners is really tricky so i am actually going to have a look around the outside just to see if i can get it done here not a load of space given and he does cut across so i'm going to try this switcheroo back up the inside trying to find my way through because I do think if he left me alone just for a little bit, I would be able to get away. Uh, and so you do have to make sure you're in front to give yourself the possibility of doing that. So down the back straight, he does manage to get it through there. You can see how the group four is just faster through those uh, quicker corners. So we're going to go around the outside here of Jensen on the group two. They are our teammates next door in the pits. Uh, and so, yeah, leaving them lots of space. And then up this top corner, I'm going to try around the outside again. It worked previously. So I'm going to try swing it around the outside. But no, 60 comes across. Uh, so I was a little bit, again, with my helmet on, I was a little bit frustrated about that because he, uh, he, did, he didn't hold his line. But all is well. We spoke about it after. Everything's fine. So 42, we have actually cost ourselves a position there. While I was looking for one, uh, we cost ourselves on the other. So as we come around this top corner, you can see the view from the marshalling point. Uh, and we're carrying a lot of speed around that corner. Uh, the mower getting up on two wheels is fairly normal through there. So down into this right, again, this was really tight. So we were liking the inside line, but the group fours was kind of swinging around the outside to keep the momentum, keep the revs up, because all the power is at the top end of these engines. So when you're coming out the slow corners, it's pretty tricky. And you can see here just how good we are at the start of the straight. Really, really good. But as soon as I have to lift, um, then Jamie comes flying past, so I think he's carrying a little bit of a bigger gearing overall than we are. So tucking into this top corner. So yeah, very happy with this first stint. Uh, as it's starting to get dark, we're starting to see what the track is like. Uh, it's getting very, very bumpy as we actually grab a, a triple overtake there. Uh, by choosing the right side of the circuit to be on that one that worked for us uh, but yeah just trying to learn the circuit finding our lines they're constantly changing um, and there we are so we are getting the signal after 45 minutes uh, for one more lap so we're going to skip ahead and as i come down the inside you can see just how dark it's getting getting a little bit caught up there so we're going to pull in for our first pit stop pulling over into the pit lane pulling the cutoff out i'm just trying to help them get the cap off and now we have got the fuel going in so we have this like auto cutoff thing uh, they're not actually great, but anyway, this is the most effective way of getting the fuel in. So fuel on, Richard on the mower as well, and he's going to settle in for his stint, going into the night, trying to learn the track uh, all over again. And it was very, very tricky, but he did an incredible job in this second stint. So just got in from my stint. That was a very busy one. Very busy all at the start. I kind of got clumped up. I got an amazing launch. Managed to, well, I think we're about half a lap behind P2 in class, so that's good. But it was just so rutted, like so tricky. All the way, all of the braking zones have rippled up. And then all of the fast corners, you just got to be so careful. It's really brutal, right? This is rougher than it was at midnight last year. So we'll see how it goes. Richard's out there now. We'll see how he gets on. 
So after that first stint, we were actually forced four laps in the lead of MWA, our main competitors. So Richard was putting in some really, really good lap times. But during that first stint, uh, they actually had to change their gearing. It was a little bit high. So here they are, MWA, and they had to bring it down. So that cost them some initial time, but they were really, really flying. So Richard went out there to really put in uh, best lap times he could for 45 minutes. And then Glenn hopped on. He's new to the team this year, but incredibly experienced. He's actually won this race on a group Group 3 in 2011, uh, competed many, many times, and so a very quick and consistent driver. And actually, through this uh, first couple of stints, we were losing a little bit of time to them. So it's my turn to hop in and really try and put in some lap time. So we're going to get out, started out of our, our stint here, back on, and you can see it's very, very foggy, a little bit misty. The track has changed completely. You can see just how rutted it is here. Now, I am wearing the head cam again this time. We actually had to uh, remove the 360 camera that goes on our steering shaft because it was blocking the lights so when Richard came in he said I can't see anything and I really need it you could see on my first in how it's starting to block the lights but uh, when it got dark that was really tricky so actually as we come through here my he my head camera the mount broke off so you're not going to see any of this stint, which is really unfortunate. But I was left on the other side of the circuit with a camera shaking around that I didn't want to lose. And so I had to pull it off and then throw it at the guys in the pit lane as I drove by. Just got in. You won't have seen any of that stint because my camera fell off. I threw it at you. How was your stint? Rough. Bumpy. Yeah? Yeah. So we're just discussing lines to try and avoid some of the ruts. But... um. Yeah, so that stint, I went out and in the first lap, the camera fell off my helmet. So I was holding it, having to drive one lap with one hand. And so I came in, I just threw it at the guys in the pit lane and carried on. And for the first stint, because it's so misty, I couldn't see anything. My goggles were fogging up, like all our goggles just by the circuit are fogging up with no one touching them, not wearing them. So I was going out, I couldn't see anything. So I pulled the goggles off and then suddenly I could see. So every, everyone is running the race with no goggle. It's very, very tricky out there. The worst track I've ever raced on by some way uh, in terms of ruts. It basically happens because as soon as there's one bump, all the mowers hit that bump and then they all land in the same place and then that becomes a rut and then the same thing happens. So the whole circuit just ruts up everywhere. So you have to try and find different racing lines around it. But after another hour and a half, we, we got off and Glib was not happy. <laughs> So he is just warning me about how bumpy it is, particularly on that back straight. So we're going to go out and see. Again, I've got the camera mounted in a slightly different location. We'll move that out of the way in a second, so you should see something here. But yeah, again, it was just so misty. that It was almost a very, very light rain and uh, lots of fog so it was very hard to see you can see i come around the corner there how important the marshals are because you just cannot see what is going on so i'm coming around there it's very very bumpy just making sure the camera's on there securely because i've got it mounted on the steering wheel which, which i've only ever done once or twice before but anyway through that fast corner you can see just how tricky it is and this is the view i was getting through the goggles so actually at this point i ripped my goggles off again and we're running without them uh, so you can see here i've got no goggles on head camera on there and just how tricky it was to see now i apologize for the view here but this is kind of realistic of what it's like um you do get very used to uh, you're not using the headlights so much you kind of hit your reference points and you know where the track is kind of going to be uh, you do learn it so well after doing so many laps so yeah down this bottom corner you can see just how bumpy it is i'm getting thrown around on all of these ruts they are some of the biggest ones we'd ever deal with if this was a sprint weekend we would have moved the track to avoid those bumps but obviously on a race like this where everything is so set up and the, the hay bales weigh a ton each on each of the corner you you just cannot do that so through some of these sections you had to be so careful about selecting your lines exactly where you put your tires to minimize the bumps through here i was finding on the left side of the straight was best at the beginning and then down the right hand side even though this is very bumpy this was the best line and as we go into this bottom corner you really want to slow up the mower almost too much so it'd want to stall so you had to sort of carry a bit too much momentum through and hit the bumps and kind of just deal with it so you can see i'm kind 
kind of settling in here uh, into this stint. Again, uh, the race was very, very close at this point. After the MWA guys had smashed in some incredible lap times to start this, they'd actually leveled right up and there they are. So they pull out in front of us. They've come out of their pit stop and this is almost level-headed. I think it was one lap either way. I can't remember which way, but I kind of knew this was the battle. So I cannot let Pete, who has just hopped on that mower, get away from me. Now, Pete is an incredibly fast driver. I've raced him a lot throughout this. And so it's kind of about just trying to find our way by. So as we settle uh, into this lap, I'm, I am just going to settle in behind and try and learn his line, see what he's doing, but try and make a move as quick as we can. So we're coming through this section. Number 37, our main rivals there, kind of letting a group four uh, around the outside. And that's actually spread us out a little bit. As we turn in, can we find a move around the outside here? We're going to try and push all the way around the outside here. And actually, we get it done up the inside. Uh, into that fast right hand corner so I was just trying to make sure I knew that if they were behind me I could control them a bit if they were in front they might be able to get away or if there was uh, any traffic they'd be able to get away so I just thought you know if I've got them behind me and I, I'm happy defending uh, we can hold them up behind us now it sounds silly that you know we're three hours into a 12 hour race and we're already defending uh, but you just don't want them to extend their deficit we'd have a, a couple of stints where they were pulling away and we wanted to make sure that wasn't the case in this one so I thought if I get ahead we can make it happen and really control the pace but actually it was this section of this stint where uh, we had our first problem, it did start to go wrong. So as we settle into this lap, I hit a really big bump there. And that was just after running ever so slightly wide. And ever since after that, I, I had a strange feeling through the steering. Now, I was kind of in my head. I, I do have a tendency to overthink things on the mower. And so I didn't know, Callum, are you just in your own head here? But as I come down the straight, I started to feel a bit of a wheel wobble. Uh, and actually, MWA are going to pull up alongside and go past us here. And as I turn into this right-hand corner, I felt a judder through the steering. And it was getting worse. You could actually hear it there. And I looked down, and my front right wheel was only just hanging on by a couple of threads. So I wanted to check that. And these, this is really bad. If this wheel came off, uh, I'd be going over the front of the mower. So I had to pull in and get it fixed. So we pit, point to the guys, the wheel's coming off, and so we had to take the hub off and then do everything up, actually replace the bolts because they were completely shot after me doing a couple of laps with them loose, and get the wheel back on. Now, this cost us some time. After being level with MWA, this pit stop cost us eight minutes of time on track, which was really a big hit. So we're gonna get back on the mower. I've still got 20 minutes left of my stint. You can see just the dirt that's accumulated on the camera after that stint. Now, that was a really big blow to our lead. Um, after, you know, kind of controlling it, it was back and forth in this first stint uh, between us and MWA. That was a really, really big blow. So I got back on the mower back on to try and figure out what we can do and put in another 20 minutes. And this was after that. Uh, and we're just gonna come in and hand the mower over to Richard. In this pit stop, we check the wheel nuts, make sure everything was okay. We don't wanna make the same mistake twice. That's definitely a golden rule here and send Richard out. All right, I'm just getting ready to go back on my stint. It's very nip and tuck. So we've been battling for first and second all race. Let me show you this. We are Mo Fear and it's been jumping between two and three laps. If we had that tire issue, we went from being two laps in front to two laps behind. So it's all about just trying to stay in it. We know this is so punishing. We will have breakdowns, they will have breakdowns. It's just about hanging in it. Two laps isn't a lot. So we're in, we're hanging in there. Glenn's out there now doing decent times, same as MWA, and we're going from there. How are you feeling? Yeah, good, nice sneak track. Yeah. He went from whinging earlier, now he's saying it's really good, so that's good. So after another incredible stint from both Glyn and Richard, we've hopped back on the mower and we are in for our fourth stint and I come out right behind Mower with Attitude, our competitor team. And so I was straight into this one. Let's see what we can get done in this stint. We're currently sitting two laps behind and so seeing what we can do. And actually, they're going to run a different line around this corner. I'm kind of trying to judge my line against theirs and they definitely got a better run out of there. So kind of learning from that section. Um, really taking note of what lines uh, Joe is running, see what he can do. Again, we're trying to 
uh, navigate the traffic. Sometimes that means we're overtaking people. Sometimes it means they're sending uh, dive bombs on us. That's kind of par for the course here. So yeah, 37 going all the way around the outside, carrying a bit more momentum onto that straight. So that's definitely a, a, a section where I can learn from their lines. Up the inside here, I felt I had a, a good line. Again, we're sort of kind of following them seeing what they can do and I'm just trying to find any way to go around the outside here actually and up the inside of this corner trying to get it done I saw a little bit of a gap and absolutely sent it so very happy with that one didn't cost myself a bad exit uh, and so we're just trying to settle into this get it go down the straight and off we go we're going to try and do our best to run away and so into this top corner is getting very very busy up the inside we've got a group two on the left a group four up ahead trying to figure out our way round. And again, you, you get used to kind of how this settles through. They're taking a slightly wider line because that's where the smooth uh, ground was. Again, we've got another lawn bug up in front actually in 63. So those guys, they're wearing a red vest because they're beginners, but they actually pulled together the mower and entered a week before the race. So incredible work by them uh, just getting involved with it. And actually up ahead here, although I skipped a few laps, there is Mo with attitude and what I'm shouting about is that he's got a, a tire hanging off the rim here so what I didn't know actually after this stint was that I'd gone by them earlier on and since then uh, Joe actually had a crash in one of the faster corners rolling the lawnmower and that's what caused that flat tire so they went in and pitted and then a couple of laps later I'm back behind them again now if you're paying attention here you'll notice that we were two laps behind and now we've gone past them twice and so this actually here is the move for the lead we're up the inside getting a great run down this straight and we've taken back the lead here after that it, early uh, deficit that we that we got after uh, losing what well, nearly losing the wheel there we are back in the lead of this race and so really flying now and I, I cannot tell you how motivating this was inside my helmet working all of this out and knowing that we've gone past those guys twice after having a, you know a really unlucky issue and to be fair to them they had a, a similar uh, issue come their way um, and actually uh, that crash uh, did really hurt them on that on that bit so it's kind of how it goes with these 12 hour races there is a balance of luck here and sometimes you get it sometimes you don't and uh, it looked to us at this stage where we had sort of the same breakdown almost they'd had a wheel come off we'd had a, a wheel come off so yeah we're very happy with this position again it was about just getting my head down and trying to make it happen and now actually up the inside MWA comes so after another 10 laps they are now coming from behind me now i was trying to figure out what happened here and actually they pitted joe had got off uh, after his crash and pete had got back on and pete is incredibly quick as i said earlier i've raced him a lot in the sprint meetings and he's having a look up the inside onto the back straight and i do manage to keep hold of it so i'm going to cover it off i'm not going to give him the inside see what he can do here again as we control the revs he does try around the outside but actually that does lead, still leave me with some room some very fair racing from both of us and i do manage to get by uh pete leaving us the room very very good racing here so we are in the middle of a 12 hour stint currently battling for the lead on track and as i come down this back section you can see it throws me all the way out the seat the bumps were getting very very nasty as we're trying to swing around the outside to find a marginally smoother line and get some momentum onto this back straight and you can see through this section just how rutted it is um and actually it was it got worse when the sun came up because you could see how bad the ruts were whereas here uh, it wasn't you know you can't at least you can't see the things that are punishing you so hard through this so as we come out of this section uh, just trying to settle in for another lap trying to deliver as, as consistent a laps as possible and Pete is gonna have another go try it around the outside but I've got that covered off again he has got a bit more uh, power down the end of the straight a bit more straight line speed uh, and so trying to manage that and make sure he can't get by again this is a similar thing where I was happy being in front because I could control his pace I knew they weren't gaining on us um, if I was still in front so uh, very very happy with that and it, as it comes to the end of my uh, what's that fourth stint we're going to pull in and hand it over to Richard yet again after a really really engaging fun stint there so fuel goes in Richard's about to get on I'll pull the camera off because it could be distracting the long way okay well, we got this let's go good speed very good i got him three times yeah. just got off the mower after the most fun stiff it was brutal don't get me wrong it was very rutted and tricky but the guys we're battling with i overtook them three times 
They put a new driver on, he got me, I got him back and managed to hold him behind me. So really happy with that. I basically took our deficit and now we're leading by a lap. So very, very happy with that. That was hard, but because I had competition, I had something to push for, it was, it was really fun. Let's go. So Glyn's out there now. We are very happy looking at this timing screen. So after the last lap, we were like even with them for a while. We've been about a lap apart. And now Glyn is sending it. So we are Mo Fear. And currently four seconds a lap faster and right on them. And that will put us four laps ahead. We are pushing hard. Uh, really try it now, so let's go. Yeah. So after that one, very happy with Glyn. He was absolutely flying on that stint. Uh, he managed to pull an entire lap on the MWA guys and then get past them. So very, very good work there. And as we're settling in here, you can see the sun has come up and you can see just how polished and rutted this track is, how tricky it is. Like, look at some of these sections. It is so, so rough. Uh, and so as we come out here again, still no goggles because they were fogging up so badly uh, i don't know something about the weather anyway it's very very tricky so we're running with no goggles back on the mower trying to do up the camera here to make sure it doesn't come off and we're just going to settle into this stint now this was actually the final stint of the race and we went into this knowing that i had to hold with them so there's mwa i've taken a note of where i am on track and where they are uh, and just making sure that I don't lose anything. So we've come into this final stint. I had 30 minutes left to do. So we're 11 and a half hours into this race and we are currently four laps in the lead. So all I knew from this stint is I had to not make a mistake, not break the mower and not let them by. So we've got crowds forming again for the end of the race. Uh, 8 a.m. it is now. And I just get a signal from Richard saying there's two more laps to go. Now, having known that we are four laps in the lead, that is an incredibly encouraging uh, thing to hear. So as we're tucking into this top corner, we've got again Jensen Creswell on the mower. Uh, they are leading their class by something like 50 laps. Uh, and so they are absolutely flying on group two. So we go past, give him some encouragement. We're only a couple of laps to go. And actually, Charlie hears that as well. <laughs> All getting very excited for the end of this race. Up the top corner there. And as we uh, swing around here, trying to find our way around the outside of that group four, tucking up the inside. Again, trying to get it done. Up here, and I believe this is the final lap. Uh, again, on the mower, you never really know what's going on here uh, about what the exact timings are and how, how it's all going to work out. So we're going to go down this back straight. I think for the final time, you can see just how polished and smooth it is. As we come around this top corner, I can see the chequered flag. Absolutely over the moon with that. And after never being close in one of these big races, this is going to be our first huge race win. And you can see just how much it meant to win the 12 hour lawnmower race in our class in group three. Now this just meant the world. I was so excited. I couldn't believe that it had come true. And actually MWA, the team up the end of the pit lane, giving us a high five here, sticking their hand out. Really, really nice of them. Great to battle them, an incredible battle. At the end of the day, you know, we got a bit of a luck of bit of luck on our side uh, and yeah just ran our laps and it was an incredible battle to be part of with them you can see what it meant yes. our is giving us a, a fist bump there Richard absolutely exhausted after that one and Paul as well who also won his class Callum McIntyre Mo Fear coming through after such a tough race victory in group three how does that one feel what a race that was a 12 hour battle down to a couple of laps and oh my god I can't believe it I so after believe. that win over the mood about that bringing back the mower and actually I hadn't seen Glyn yet so I had to go over and give Glyn a hug incredible performance from him hopping on this mower that is you know definitely set up for myself and Richard and he hopped on did an incredible job and you can see just what that 12 hours did to this mower it ran all night after doubts about the engine in practice that thing flew so we are over the moon with that oh incredible race please do subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.